C960 Discrete Math 2 has been passed, finally. This class was the longest class it took, but finally, I passed it. This class took me exactly 30 days to complete. I finished this, today is the 20th, but I actually finished this on Friday, the 20, or the 17th, rather. And to this video, I'm going to outline what I did and what I would do taking it over. So now I'm just going to give you my overall opinion. This class was the most overwhelming and hardest to learn, but it was the easiest final. Kind of weird. It also took me the longest. Now, that said, I do want to give myself a slight excuse in that I did start a new job. And for the first two weeks, for those of you who have started new jobs, it's always like it's a brain dump for the first two weeks. And I was toast after every day of work and I could barely study because I was still learning how to do this new job. Like, what was it going to be like? All the meetings. I was sitting in meetings all stinking day. But I had to get a new job. And, you know, I was going through that process there. So I wasn't able to study as much or as hard as I wanted to. But to say whether this was the hardest class, it's hard for me to say, where I say it was the hardest to learn, easy is fine. What I mean by that is once you learn the concepts, because math is just a, a bunch of algorithms essentially applied to a math problem, you have to learn how to recognize it, then you have to learn what to do. Once you learn how to do that, the questions are very easy. Like, all the questions on the test, I felt pretty confident on. I'm like, all right, well, this is the answer. But to learn it was very difficult. And if I'm going to compare this with operating systems for programmers, to me, in my opinion, that's very easy to learn. Because I, I just sit there and like, okay, well, what does what does a, a register mean? Well, it just means this. Okay, cool. Well, let me just sound and memorize that, right? It's not like, okay, what is, uh, what is the Euclidean algorithm? Right? So there's a little more steps to the Euclidean algorithm than knowing what the definition of a register is. Uh, so that said, it's easy to learn operating systems for programmers, but the task was super hard because everything's super vague and you like don't even realize, like, wow, that felt like this. I'll skip the class. Um, so as you can tell, it's easy as final. Therefore, I got the high score, which is super interesting. So let me let me explain to you my journey, what I did. First thing I did was I tried reading the design book. That's when I instantly started getting overwhelmed. I'm like, wow, this is really hard to read out of a textbook, which makes a lot of sense. I thought maybe I could get through it because, like, I did discrete math one at study.com and it was okay. Doing this, I got super overwhelmed. So I watched some videos that were linked in a Reddit post, which I'm going to show you later that lists like a bunch of it. And then I got overwhelmed again. I'm like, wow, this like sucks. There's a lot. This is a lot of stuff to go through. So then I then tried taking the practice assessment, which like all of it was like completely nonsense to me. Like, all right, well, I, I don't know where to start. And I was just like, okay, well, I feel super overwhelmed. I went to Reddit. I started reading through all this stuff. And, and this is, I'll, I'll link this, but by JawZXD, right? These guy did a lot faster than me or girl, I should say. Doesn't matter. I don't know. And this one here has a bunch of links and videos and helpful, useful tools um, this, I did watch the videos from here and tried to go through it. Uh, but basically what I started doing after getting overwhelmed reading this, I just started booking a bunch of times with the course instructors to go through the practice assessment. I went through every single question with the practice instructor and it took about 10 to 15, 10 to 15 minutes to go through all the practice assessment. And then also they have supplemental worksheets when you get into the class. And after going through the practice assessment and working on what we talked about, basically what I'd do is I'd go with practice assessment. He, they'd explain to me how to do this. And then after that, I would just go back and do the problem every time, do the problem by hand again. And after doing all the practice assessment, I was able to do about 70% of the supplemental worksheets to which then I finished the rest with either the instructors or YouTube. And even if I could get the answer on my own, what I would do is literally walk through and explain to the uh, course instructor how I did it just so that I verbalize it to someone and they can see any deficiencies if I'm just like making up the explanation versus actually getting the explanation correct. After that, I did the course planning tool, which I will say is critical, which I'll explain just a little later. Uh, but there's a course planning tool that basically gives you new questions that don't have any context to them. Like you don't know this is chapter five, you don't know this is chapter two. And that was critical to go through. So now what would I say if you were to go through it once again? Number one, the very first thing you should do is for every two to three hours of study time, look at your week 
and ask yourself, when can I study? And for every two to three hours of study time, I would book a call with one of the course instructors. And I would do this very first thing because their time gets booked up pretty quick. So I would first try to get a 15-minute meeting just to talk about the course, tell them you're new, tell them what I should expect. And then still book two to three meetings at a time. So I would have literally one call early in the morning and then one call in the evening, one call early in the morning and one call in the evening, and then I would study two to three hours in between, basically, is what I would do. All these people are great, Nick, John, Bob. And when you get on the calls with the with the course instructors, go through the practice assessment with them, every single question, maybe with the exception of the last like five questions, because it's it, they're they're just work they're just graphs. And after you do a call, you do like these five questions. Let's just say you get through only five questions on the call, rework the problems by hand, whatever the process they showed you. And then if you didn't fully understand, like watch YouTube on how to do it. Now, once you go through all the practice assessment can do them, I would go through the supplemental worksheets. Now, YouTube what you can't do and then save the remaining for the course instructors. And again, even if you're working through the supplemental worksheets, I would still every two, three hours have a call with a course instructor so that you can even walk through what you did for the supplemental worksheets and whatnot. So that's essentially what I would do. After that, you'd want to do the course planning tool. Now, very critical to the course planning tool because interestingly enough, they phrase questions differently than the practice assessment and the supplemental worksheets do. So it's a little different, but all I'm gonna say is very critical that you go through those. Then after that, go on a call with the course instructor to do that. So now just to get into the weeds of things, this is only gonna be relevant for those who are in the course. And for those who have not yet to take the course, this is literally not gonna make sense to you. So I acknowledge that. Uh, and I am alienating some of you guys listening. So I don't know, you can skip it or end the, meeting, or end, end, end the video here. I don't know. But for those in the course, in my opinion, one, four, five, and six were easy. There were rehashes. Four, five, and well, all right, let, let, me, let me backtrack. Six was just a bunch of graphs, which you can learn how to read easily. Four and five were simply reviews of the discrete math one from study.com. And that's all they were, just probability questions. The only thing you had to learn is basically multi-set questions, and that's about it. Number one can be easy depending on what kind of coding background you have. If you've dealt with trying to learn how to do big O before, then it's relatively easy. You just have to work through problems, that's it. Two and three were harder, but you just need to break down every single one. Okay. There's Euclidean algorithm, and, the, and this is how you I would break it up. There's Euclidean algorithm slash uh, RSA encryption, which if you can do Euclid, you can do RSA. So first learn Euclid, then use RSA. After that, use base change, which is hexadecimal to binary, binary to you know decimal and whatnot. Those are gonna be in the worksheets. If you can do the ones in the worksheets, you're good for the test. Mod slash successive squaring. That's a technique that you will find within the practice assessment. Induction, which is actually a lot easier than induction. I was so overwhelmed by induction and I realized all the principle of induction is, is number one, you just prove the base case. Make sure the base case is real. So typically nine out of 10 times, that's just gonna be putting one in. So you just substitute your N for one, nine out of 10 times, one or zero typically. And then after that, all you need to do is anytime there's an N, you put K plus one. That's all you need to do. That's literally all induction is. Need help with induction? Reach out, let me know. And then recurrence relationships. There's a formula to get it, but I just did it manually. You can do recurrence relations manually and you're gonna be good to go. I'm pretty sure I got all the, the recurrence relations right. That one, there, there was a number of questions for recurrence relations and there's a complicated algorithm to learn how to do it. But if you just take two seconds to do it by hand, there's, there's a manual way. And in my opinion, that's faster than trying to learn just one more algorithm or one more formula basically. So that's what I would say for in the course. I would, now going back, what I would do honestly, is I would just, Probably focus on four and five first because that gives me you the easy wins. Two and three were just so overwhelming to me. And and once I understood like it was just these one, two, three, four, five things, I was like, this this is this this is easy. Easier, I should say. But uh, for testing, let's talk about that real quick. I used the full two two hours on it, and then I hard guessed on just two questions. 
I it was two questions that I knew would take a little longer, so I just focused on I just kind of skipped them and um and just focus on ones I can knock out. So I believe the two I skipped on were more like uh expected value questions, I believe. Yeah, they were they were expected they were uh they they were skept, skept, expected value questions. And, and and I I just had the hard guess on them. Now, in terms of how hard it is, in my opinion, it's just as hard as the practice assessment. So if you can do the practice assessment, then you're good. But it's easier than the worksheet. So if you can do the worksheet, that's a really good guide to figure out what you can do. Do not forget to do the course planning tool because that's really going to help you. So let's just say that. Very much going to help you. And here you go. Once again, this took 30 days to complete. This is the best score I've gotten at any practice assessment. This is the easiest test, hardest to learn. And as you see, where I got... Euclid RSA, which was the hardest one, unit two. I, you know, I I got literally 100%. Recursion and induction, as I said, induction is a lot harder than it looks like. And um, all you do is find a base case and then you, you, uh, then you put K plus one, which is very little. There's more recursive questions in which you would, I would just do it manually. And if you need help with that, just DM me or, or whatnot or a comment and I can reach out to you or I don't know how that is done these two are just these two modules are simply rehashes of discrete math one from study.com this one is just graphs which is funny because i didn't do that great on it's just graphs but once you figure out how to read the graphs you're good and algorithms this one can be hard depending on what your experience is with um with understanding algorithms in my opinion if you can identify how to run through algorithms which is pretty easy via pseudocode but if, for o of n you if you can just understand that one for loop means O of N, and then two for loops mean N squared. Now, if you knew what I just said right there, a nested for loop is N squared, I think you're good to go. That's really all you need memorized, and you're good to go. So that is it. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I will update you on my next class, which is software one. We shall see how fast I get through that, and thank you so much for watching.